Hello, welcome to Literary Life and welcome to today's video, which is a book review of Lone Woman by Victor LaBelle. So first, guys, I want to apologize. I know the background is horrendous. I'm in the process of moving. We will be out of here in a few weeks into our new home. So definitely excited to bring you some video from rooms with a room with a book in it, essentially. <laughs> There'll be lots of books. All right, so let's get started, though. These are spoiler-free reviews. As always, I will have links below if you want to purchase a copy of this book, as well as a link to uh, my Pango books. I will be putting this book available for sale um, today. Let's talk about Lone Woman, guys. This was a book of the month club selection for me, and what really caught my attention by this book was the genre blend. It was listed as horror, but as you read it, the book was set in Montana, 1915, and it definitely had that like Wild West historical fiction woven into it. And I had not read a horror book that really was set in um, that particular type of setting, and I was really intrigued and grabbed it, and I'm glad I did. So we're going to meet our main character. Her name is Adelaide um, Henry, and she starts out in the book residing with her parents who are recently deceased. We don't know what happened, but we know it is related to a secret that Adelaide um, is burdened with. And the secret is literally something heavy and significant that she keeps locked in a massive trunk. That is all we know. We're going to meet Adelaide at the time of her parents' death. She is going to make the choice at that point to immediately depart her home in California, the whole state, and go to Montana. What I thought was really interesting is her decision is based on land rights. So essentially, you go in, there is a board a man who oversights the parcels of land. You select which one you want. Based on what may be already there, he may charge you extra for it. So he really benefits when people go there, try to dig a well, dig a well, or build a cabin or a shack. And then they depart because the conditions are too horrific or they die. He benefits from that. And I'm really intrigued by this whole process. But she selects her parcel if you get there and you then manage to say, stay three years and grow a set amount of crops on a part of the land that's predefined, you essentially own that land. And people continue to do this successfully. I was really curious, though. It was interesting to me that not just a female, but a female of color was able to do this in 1915. That is when the book is set in. Um, something I meant to dig into and I still plan to. I'm not sure how historically accurate it is. So there may definitely be a play on some of the laws that were in place at that time. Regardless, we're going to follow our heroine to Montana. I thoroughly enjoyed seeing her entry into the small town, seeing essentially how she had to live. In fact, I could have even gone more into the survivalist component, what it was like to live on the land, what it was like to set yourself up for long-term residency. That was a part of the book that I wish the author had really pulled through more and woven into the story. Um, so if you guys have good recommendations for books that really go into that, I that is a trope I really enjoy. So drop them below for me. While there, she is going to get to know the townspeople, but her secret in that trunk is going to um, essentially become a main character or element of the story. And we're going to see how the town and uh, Miss Henry herself, Adelaide, have to come to terms with the situation she is in and what is in that trunk. The book is flagged as being graphic um, compared to some of the other horror books I've read by Book of the Month Club. I found that this one was mildly disturbing for me in particular. So this wasn't the most graphic book um, that I've read through Book of the Month Club or in the horror genre in general, by all means. This is not one where I felt like there is a lot of scenes that I, that really stuck with me. So I just want to flag that if you're someone that's a little squeamish. This is one I think that there is some a couple of 
gruesome moments, but they're not overly described, overly sensationalized. So I feel like it's one that you may be able to stomach. I did enjoy the author's writing, his way of telling the story several times. I really liked the way he laid things out for you. So I thought the writing was really strong. I just wanted more from the plot. So I ended up settling. I was really on the fence for me. I give a book three stars if it's a good book. I give a book four stars if it's a great book. And I loved it. I was really going back and forth between the two. And I decided to settle on four stars for my rating for this book because of the uniqueness of the story, the way the genres were interwoven, and because I did like the author's way of telling a story. I just wish there had been maybe a little bit more of a nod to what truly was happening in history at this time. Um, If he was breaking from reality, maybe a little intro to explain that, because I found myself baffled a lot. Like, would this really have been able to happen? Would it would were people of color even allowed these rights or women allowed these rights? And I did struggle with that a little bit. And like I said, I felt like he had this amazing setting that he was setting the story in. And I would have loved to have that really kind of pulled through more um, and really have the environment climate become almost a character in this story. So that would have made it a solid four star uh, read for me. But I did really enjoy it, like I said, so I settled on. I'm going to go ahead and go with four stars for this book. If this was one of your Book of the Month Club selections, let me know what you thought below. As I noted, I'll have links if you decide to pick up this book. Would love to hear what everyone thinks once read. Other than that, let's go read some more books. Happy reading.